Welcome to Pro Tradecraft's Weatherization Nation, a show about building smart from the start. Last week, we made a cold, wet hole into a warm and dry crawl space using Thermax Polyiso foam board and smart plastic strategies. Because um, we found that when we do this and we have the gravel down, as you're working on it, you stretch it out and you're walking on top of it, sometimes you can start to uh, tear, rip, or puncture your plastic. So what we do is we take some of the leftover stuff that we've got, put a couple strips down, so that way when we put our 6 mil or 8 mil on top of it, um, and you're walking on top of it, you're not actually creating holes in your vapor barrier. They sealed the new crawl space to the old building with great stuff and moved on to the framing. In this episode, we're going to learn why the WRB is such a BFD. What we're talking about today are weather-resistant barriers. Uh, back in the day, they used to be uh, tar paper. Tar paper would dry out and crack. Uh, it did not handle weather or UV very well. Nowadays, we have longer spans between putting up our siding and our windows and doors. Important factors about the WRB, weather-resistant barrier, it's an air and water barrier. So when it rains, the rain drains down the side of it. It's going to continually move water away from the house. Another thing that's really important about a WRB is its permeability, which means the amount of vapor that it can transfer through. A lot of times during construction, it's, it's built during rainy days or weather, and you want that plywood to be able to dry out over and not be stuck behind a vapor barrier that won't allow any moisture out. Okay, let's pause a second to make a point of that. Pro Tradecraft travels all over the country to job sites, and we see this on blueprints a lot. In fact, Tyvek, Tyvek is, is not a vapor barrier. barrier. It allows vapor to pass through it and dry out through diffusion. A vapor barrier would be like a solid piece of plastic that is not going to allow any air or moisture through it. It is a water and air barrier. It allows vapor to pass through it through permeability. Tyvek is not a vapor barrier. Now that we've cleared that up, let's move to animation land for a strategy session. The general strategy for using house wrap as a water barrier is to cover all the seams and gaps in the exterior sheathing overlapping correctly. To upgrade Tyvek to an air barrier, seal the top and bottom as well as the vertical and horizontal seams. Each layer should overlap to the outside so that water is continually directed away from the house. Seams are sealed against air leaks, and the WRB should extend all the way to the bottom of the roof deck for a continuous air and water barrier. Begin the process at the bottom. Make sure to seal the wall sheathing to the foundation with flashing tape. The WRB should overlap that seal. Next, they staple the bottom corner, tack the top, and then roll out the Tyvek, aligning the bottom to where it should be and stapling minimally to make sure to get a smooth, tight fit. With the bottom tight, Ray works his way up the sheet to staple it off using a cap stapler. There are several reasons here to use cap staples and cap nails. Uh, a larger area of space holding it to the building, therefore less likely for wind to rip it away. Secondly, as water travels down the building towards the cap, it is more likely to hit the cap and travel around the staple instead of an old school slap stapler that may have damaged your WRB and provided an opening for water to get in. Uh, another thing just to be careful of when you're putting in your, your cap staples, you want to keep this away from any of your flashing. Anything where your flashing is going to go up against it and create a void behind it, it provides an area for water to leak in and get into. You also don't want to run your seam tape over top any of these caps um, as that will provide a bad adhesion and water can uh, work its way into the building as well. At the end, where the WRB meets the existing house, they cut the Tyvek tight into the corner and staple it home. Later, they'll cut about an inch off the end of the Tyvek and use flashing tape to bridge the WRB to the wall sheathing for an airtight connection. Ray can finish off the stapling now that the WRB is where it ought to be. On this next row here, what we're going to do is we're going to overlap a minimum of six inches. 
In most building practices, you want to overlap every product that you put on. That way, if water runs down the, the front of the building, it's going to get, continually be pushed to the outside. You never want to have a situation of reverse flashing, which would direct water into the building where it cannot dry out. They cut the pieces to length on the ground and then install the upper course off ladders, stapling the bottom in place first and then moving up. Victor puts a couple of staples in the top corner, holds the sheet tight, and then moves to the opposite end to pull it into place. With the corners tight, he can staple off the bottom and the field, spacing staples about every 16 inches. The same process holds for the other walls. Cut the sheet to length on the ground, fasten the bottom corner, and then align the top corner. On this wall, Victor can wrap the corner, beginning at the top, moving to the bottom, and then hitting the in-between parts. They pull the bottom tight, staple it, and move to the last corner, the top right. Sometimes you need to adjust from where the initial staples were, which is one reason not to staple in the field until the whole sheet is in place and in good shape. Again, overlapping the corners at least six inches stops sideways wind and water from sneaking into the wall system. Seams are taped against air leaks, being careful not to tape over a cap staple, which can cause a fish mouth in the tape. A J-roller or squeegee will wet the adhesive of the tape into the Tyvek. Most construction tapes and flashings are pressure sensitive, so it's important to roll them onto the substrate. Finally, they fill in the gable end the same way they did the rest. Cut it to length, place the bottom of the sheet, spread it out. In this case, they cut it in place, staple it off, and seal the seams. With the final piece in place, that's what we call a wrap. For the day and for the house. With a perfectly installed WRB, we're ready to cut some holes in it for windows, which will be flashed and sealed into place for an airtight, watertight seal. And we'll do that in depth in the next episode of Weatherization Nation.